Hello friends, this video on coordination compound part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Before we start with the Werner theory, let's understand something about this guy, Alfred Werner. He has contributed a lot. His contribution to the coordination compound industry is huge. Right? This guy is a Swiss chemist and he was the guy, he was the scientist who formulated the idea about the structure of the coordination compounds, right, which contains the complex ions. He was actually a student and at the University of Zurich, but at the age of 29 itself, he became the professor there and he won Nobel Prize in 1913. Why he won the Nobel Prize was because he proposed the octahedral configuration of this transition metal complex. So he had huge contribution okay so it was all it was known that the cobalt forms a complex and the formula was also known this this thing was known prior to uh, his inventions okay in 1893 so prior to his invention in 1893 uh, it was known that cobalt forms a complex co cn3 and 6 ns3 see this formula can be derived using stoichiometry. Okay, so this reacts with some X other molecules to give Y, and based on the volumetric analysis, you can actually uh, find the molecular formula that there is a uh, this is the substance has one mole of cobalt, three moles of chlorine, and six moles of ammonia. This was known to people, right? But the nature of association was little unknown. The structure was unknown, really mysterious. Thousand cobalt form uh, six and plus seven bond, or sorry, six plus three, nine bonds. Right? It was a little mysterious. People didn't know why uh, or what is the structure of this particular compound. So, this guy, Alfred Werner, he proposed the structure. He proposed the structure of this compound. He told that the structure of this is something like this CONH3, and he has given a box here and CO3. And this, if you see uh, the oxidation number of cobalt here, this is minus 3, so this is 0, so it becomes plus 3. Right? This is chlorine, chlorine 3, chlorine, this is minus 3, and ammonia is 0, so overall it has to be 0, minus 3 plus 3 is 0, yes, correct. Yeah, right. So cobalt has the oxidation state of plus 3. Right? So this is the formula he proposed, and he named this, uh, we will see the naming of this in IPAC. The name of this will be hexamine. Because six ammonia in cobalt and the three oxidations still one two three and then the chlorine here so it will be chlorine. So we'll talk about the oxidation state of I mean uh, IUPAC naming of this. So he gave the structure saying that this cobalt okay has three ammonia six ammonia and this six ammonia is seven. This is the structure he proposed. So he proposed that there is a cobalt and there are six ammonia molecules that is attached to it in the octahedral structure and these three chlorine molecules are actually disassociated as free ions. So we told that these are free ions. So actually in the solution this will disassociate but this complex will not disassociate. Okay and this was confirmed actually by measuring the conductivity of the compound in the aqua solution because in the aqua solution this will disassociate and this will be conductor. Right, and is here if you see sodium chloride, if you put in water, the water becomes conductor because the chloride ions. So, uh, based on the experiments, that was confirmed that this is the structure, right? But he was the one who proposed it, okay? So, since he was the one who proposed uh, the whole coordination com complex, so the coordination complex, this coordination complex is also called Werner complex. Also called Werner complex, and not only this, he he prepared and characterized a large number of coordination compounds. He actually proposed the concept of primary and secondary valency of the metal ions. So we'll talk about the primary and secondary valencies. So if you see what he is saying is this is the primary valency and this guy is the secondary valency. We will talk about that. Okay. Also, in he did a lot in the coordination of he was the one who uh, discovered the optical activity also. 
optical activity of what? Opti uh, optical activity of correlation. Optical opti uh, of a correlation compound was discovered by Alfred Watt. So he did a lot in the field of coordination compound. Okay. So this is Alfred Bonner. Let's see how he came up with this structure. He did an experiment. Let's see his experiment. So let's see his experiment, Warner's experiment. So what he did is was in a series of compound of cobalt chloride with ammonia. He took a series of compound of cobalt with ammonia and chlorine. See cobalt, chlorine and ammonia. You can form a lot of compounds. He took a lot of compounds which has these. For example, COCl 36NS3. In this case, there was 3 chlorine and 6 ammonia. Then he took COCl 35NS3, where we have 5 ammonia. He also took COCl 34NS3, which has 4 ammonia. In fact, COCl 34NS3 also counts with a different flavor, different color. Isomers actually, that is avoided. He took, he took all these four. So we see all these fours are different. These two have the same molecular formula, but they're different and they have different colors. Okay. And now it was found that some of the chloride ions could be precipitated on adding AgCl. So when you add AgCl, so if you see this has three chlorine, this has three, this has three, this has three. So if you forget about the coordination compound concepts, if you add AgNO3 in this, in all these, if you add AgNO3, excess AgNO3, okay. So what should happen is AgNO3 should actually pluck all these chlorine out. So all these should have given 3 moles of AgCl. All these should have given AgCl 3 moles. Correct? Because all these have 3 Cl minus. Okay? That was the expected behavior. But that didn't happen. So actually, the first guy, COCl36 NS3, it was yellow, that gave 3 moles of AgCl, that was expected. The next one, that is COCl35 NS3, that gave only 2 moles of AgCl. COCl34 NS3 gave only 1 mole of AgCl. And this also, the other COCl3 NS3, the other uh, isomers, which is violet in color, this also gave 1 mole of AgCl. So this is experimental data. So this is theoretical, this is theory, and this is experiment. Okay, this is experimental data. So experimental data rules. That means our theory has something wrong, some issue with the theory. And what was the place where we were wrong? Because the bonding was not visualized properly. Okay. So if it is giving 3 moles of AgCl, that means there are 3 chlorine, chlorine ions free here. Right? 3 Cl minus free here. If it is giving 2 moles of AgCl, that is 2 Cl minus is free. The other Cl minus is not free. If it is giving 1 mole of AgCl, that is 1 Cl minus is free. In this case, again 1 Cl minus is free. The other 2 chloride ions are not free. Correct? That means the, in this case, in this case, one chloride ion remained bonded to cobalt. In this case, one two chloride ion remained bonded to cobalt because only one is free. In this case, also two chloride ion, the remaining one is, is bonded to cobalt itself. Okay, even in the solution. So that means that clearly means that we have in this case all the chloride ions outside, that means we have something called CONS36 here that is fixed that you can't change and there are 3, three CL3 which comes out in the next case we have CO NS35 and then we have two chlorine ions came out perfectly fine so we have CL2 here so other chlorine is actually bonded to cobalt itself and this is something which is not getting disassociated in this case third case I have CO NS3 4 and in this case I got only one chloride ions outside so I will give one chloride the other two chloride ions will be somewhere here in the fourth case also it will be same 
CO and H3 4 and only one chloride ion came outside and the remaining two chloride ion has to be somewhere inside the box which doesn't get dissociated. So with this he came up with this concept and he came up with the concept of primary and secondary valency. So he gave the term secondary valency for the number of groups directly attached to the metal ions. This metal ion, if you see, directly attached six. Here also directly attached five plus one six. Right? Here four plus two directly attaches six. And here four plus two directly attaches six. So this term he gave secondary valency. So secondary valency for all these cases is six. Okay. He gave this term secondary valency. The secondary valency term was not there. So he coined this term secondary valency based on his experiment. And to his surprise, he found that a particular metal ion always form same secondary valency. For example, cobalt always forms secondary valency of 6 with the oxidation state of plus 3. The oxidation state of plus 3, cobalt always forms secondary valency of We'll discuss about these things in detail. Okay. And please note this secondary valency is non ionizable. But again, this was a one hour experiment. We'll understand this primary and secondary valency once again. Thus, understand this experiment and how this experiment helped him to give a structure to this coordination compound. So he took various compounds of cobalt, chlorine and ammonia which has cobalt, chlorine and ammonia in different proportions. He added AgNO3. So typically for all these compounds he expected three moles of AgCl to come out but the, the moles of AgCl that came out or the precipitate was different. So with that observation he concluded that this is kind, this may be the uh, structure here, this may be the concept here where uh, some part is not getting disassociated. Okay, so in this case, for example, the two chlorine molecules is not getting disassociated and this is inside the box. And with that, he gave this term of secondary valency about for the, uh, the groups that is directly bound to the central metal ion or metal. And that is non-ionizable. Thank you. Visit examfear.com to watch more videos. Attempt free online tests, get free study materials, find tutors and mentors, and much more. Thanks once again.